Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in His Word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. At our church on Wednesday nights, we have a missionary moment, highlighting one of the missionaries we support. Some have an asterisk next to their names, saying their names were changed to protect them because they live in a dangerous place. Yet they chose to follow the Lord's leading to this place in spite of the dangers they would face. That ought to remind us of some of the first recorded missionaries, Barnabas, Saul, and their protege, John Mark. The church in Antioch heeded the Holy Spirit's call to send Saul and Barnabas out to take the gospel to places that hadn't heard yet. Altogether, they traveled about 800 miles, sometimes by sea, other times on foot. Their first stop was the island of Cyprus, where Barnabas originated. He knew people there, had connections. He was coming home. Of course, his love for his friends and family here would have given him a burden to tell them about the salvation that they could have through Jesus. They started out in Salamis, apparently other places on the island as well, always preaching in the synagogues first. We don't hear their reaction to the gospel. In Paphos, however, they run into opposition, a false prophet or sorcerer named Elymas. This man was a Jew who had attached himself to the Roman governor, Sergius Paulus, who was an important man in this immoral, ungodly city. The Bible says Sergius Paulus was an intelligent man, a proconsul, in charge of the whole province. He heard about these traveling preachers and wanted to hear what they had to say. What an unexpected open door for Barnabas and Saul. They'd been visiting synagogue, but here was a Roman leader who sent for them so that he could hear the gospel. At this point, Saul begins to use his Roman name, Paul. Paul had been his Jewish name, of course, named after Israel's first king. But because of his Roman citizenship, he would have had a Roman name as well, Paul which would have been more fitting for him to use before the proconsul, as well as with other Gentiles. So Barnabas and Paul begin sharing the gospel with Sergius Paulus. But Elymas, Sergius Paulus' advisor, tried to keep the truth from him, standing against Barnabas and Saul. There's a good reason why they call people like that the devil's advocate. And the Holy Spirit wasn't about to put up with it. Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, turned on Elymas and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Wow, pretty harsh words. I wouldn't recommend doing what Paul did, unless you're led by the Holy Spirit. Remember who else worked for the devil until he was struck blind? Paul himself. We don't know if Elymas repented and turned to Jesus as Paul did, but he certainly had the chance. Sergius Paulus was astonished, not just at what happened to Elymas, but what Paul was teaching, the gospel, salvation from sins, God's grace. And he believes. In fact, archaeologists have found written evidence that Sergius Paulus and his whole family became Christians. Imagine how life on Barnabas' home island of Cyprus changed because of this. Do you know people like Sergius Paulus who were curious and open to the gospel? Maybe you're one of them. What's standing in your way of your belief? If it's someone you know that's curious about the gospel, what does the Holy Spirit want to say to them through you to encourage their belief? Do you know people who are like Elymas, who stand between the truth and those who want to know more? How can you respond to these people? They aren't working against you. They're working against God himself. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.